I want to welcome you back to another Bible study. Today we'll be looking at the subject, the root cause of your sufferings and how to break free. Our topic is entitled, Life is Spiritual. Many of us are suffering. We born seeing our parents or grandparents or extended family those around us in our community, in our environment, suffering. And we think things are just the way they are and they were meant to be like that. And it's just situation. And it is the government, it is the politics, it is just how things are. But nothing happened by chance, nothing just happened like that. Today we are going to look into the subject of what causes suffering and why people suffer and how we can break free from such suffering. Lamentation chapter 5, verse 7, it says, Our fathers have sinned and are not, and we have borne their iniquities. What does it mean that our fathers have sinned and that they are not? It means that our four parents, they have done sinned, sins against God. And they did not repent of it. Not only that, they are dead. And now that they are dead, we are suffering for their iniquities. The question is, as you can see on the screen, do you know your forefathers' covenant with the spirit world? Many have dabbled into the occult, in Freemason, in secret society, in sorcery, in witchcraft. They have gone to the Wobiaman, they have gone to the spiritualists, they have gone to their seers to divine for them, to receive luck. To receive riches, fame, notoriety, power. And they have done that. And in doing that, they have broken the law, the spiritual law of Yahweh, wherein Yahweh says that you should not go after witches and wizards, to seek after them that mutter and weep. Likewise, it says that you must not suffer a witch to live. And God told the children of Israel that when they go into the promised land, they should cut down the groves, burn their altar, destroy them, burn it with fire. Because God hates witchcraft. God hates sorcery. God hates men and women making pact with devils. You need to understand that devils are not interested in casual relationships. No, they're not just interested in a hookup or in a one night stand or a date. They are interested in covenants, in bloodline, in longevity relationships with individuals. They want to be a part of the bloodline. Our fathers have sinned. Your fathers have done wickedness. Have you stopped to check out? what your forefathers were dealing with, how many have been in secret society, how many are dealt in witchcraft and obia and sorcery and the wickedness that they have done and they have not repented and they are dead. And from once they have set in motion the wheel, it continues. They don't have to be living for it to continue to spawn and to work against the bloodline and against the family. In Psalm 11 and verse 3, it says, If the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Now, if your four parents have destroyed you, the foundation, what are you going to build on? What are you going to stand on? You're not going to be able to build. You're not going to stand on anything solid. What you're going to be on is a place, a home, a house without foundation. When the breeze, when the wind, when the flood, when the rain comes, 
it is going to crumble down. If foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? I tell you what the righteous can do. The righteous can rebuild the foundation. The righteous can restore the foundation. But the righteous has to know and have the knowledge to do such. Because if the righteous lack knowledge, then they won't know that the foundation has been destroyed by their ancestors. So, you need to contemplate this question by the psalmist in Psalm 11 and verse 3. You need to understand that life is spiritual. In 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 18, the Apostle Paul says, While we look not at the things which are seen, at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Life is spiritual. Many do not know that, as Sun Tzu says in his book, The Art of War, the supreme art of war is to win without fighting. How do you win a battle without fighting physically? You have to win it in the spiritual. Things happen in the spiritual, then it is made manifest in the physical. A man is successful first in the spiritual. A man is healthy in the spiritual. A man lives a long life in the spiritual. A man escapes an accident in the spiritual. A man comes out unscathed from an accident, unhurt, uninjured from an accident first in the spirit realm. And it is manifest in the physical. Life is spiritual. Everything has to happen in the spiritual. You are married in the spirit first. You suffer in the spirit realm before you suffer. When you understand that, that life is spiritual and things happen first in the spiritual. That's why Paul says here, you should look at the things which are not seen. You have to have your spiritual eyes open. For you to see the things which are tentative, are about to happen in the spirit realm against you negatively. And you got to cancel it. Even that which your fathers have done, your ancestors, the witchcraft, the necromancy, the obia, the murders, the killing that they have done with sorcery, the holding down of their neighbors and their neighbors' children and their own family members. You now have to cancel that by the power and the blood of Jesus. And you have to go in relentless pursuit of those evil spirits and destroy them by the fire of the Holy Ghost and by the blood of Jesus. Because Paul said, for the things which are seen are temporal. That which is manifested in your life, the sufferings, where you are suffering daily. You don't have a job. You don't have a wife. Your kids are suffering. Your mother, father suffering. You can hardly pay your bills. You can hardly make ends meet. You can hardly even find a day's meal to sustain your kids, your wife, and yourself. Every day you say you are at the bottom of the barrel. But what makes this possible? Your fathers have sinned and they are not. But Paul says we should look at the things which are not seen because they are eternal. Life is going on in the spirit realm. What should happen to you? What should be made manifest in your life? It all happens in the spirit world and then it manifests in the physical world. When you understand that, my friend, you will be well on your way to live in a successful life and Freeing yourself from the suffering which your ancestors have caused and which is dominating your family life and your bloodline. You don't have to join the line and be a part of the network of those who are suffering among you. But you can step out and come out victorious by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ when you understand that life is spiritual. And you need to see the things from a spiritual point of view, from a spiritual perspective, and not just look at things just happening in the physical. And you say, oh boy, life is the way it is, man's salt, and all that kind of stuff. Um, in Isaiah 4 and verse 6, what did God say? My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. 
that thou shalt be no priest to me, since thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. Now you see our four parents and many of our immoral parents, they lack knowledge, they lack spiritual knowledge. And so they practice a lot of things which are contrary to the law of Yahweh, to the law of God. And many of them reject knowledge when you come to them and you tell them that what they are doing, what they are practicing, it is a form of witchcraft or it is against the word of God. They will esteem the tradition of their grandparents and their parents because they grew up seeing mom, daddy, seeing grandpa, grandma, and auntie and uncle and their neighbors doing certain things, certain rituals. Proverbs chapter 26 and verse 2 says, As a bird by wandering, as a swallow by flying, so the curse causes shall not come. So I want you to understand that curses do not just come by happenstance or by chance. It's not that the church seek out whom it should come to just like that. But someone would have had to set a wheel in motion. They must have signed agreements with the spirit realm and as a result the payback they did not read the fine prints to know what will happen to members of their bloodline whether or not their daughters or the female is gonna be marvelous they're gonna suffer divorce they're gonna be barren they're gonna have no children or the men are so are not going to get married and have no children or they will work and not get paid and they will be vagabonds and roam the street and beg or become drunkards and gamblers and that they will be cursed they do not read the fine print these people when they go to the occult to the secret society and they sign their pack whether they write it in blood or they do whatsoever the witchcraft personality person tells them to do they do not know so do not just sit there and wallow in your suffering and say boy a life you know no god did not create you to suffer god wants you to live the abundant life in John 10 he said the son of man came that you might have life and have it more abundantly while the devil come to kill steal and destroy God wants you to have abundant life and third John 2 say I wish above all things that you prosper and be in good health so don't think that God wants you to suffer God wants none of his creatures to suffer except for the wicked devil and his demons you need to understand that Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 9, Solomon helps us to understand something key to our deliverance. In verse 9, he says, An hypocrite with his mouth destroyed his neighbor, who knowledge just shall be delivered. We're going to focus on part B, we said, but who knowledge the just shall be delivered. You need to understand that ignorance is not bliss. And ignorance cannot cause you to live a successful life or deliver you from your sufferings, your heartache, your pain, or your tragic tragedy that you are experiencing. You need the relevant knowledge how to escape from such sufferings. And you need the knowledge so that the knowledge which will make you know why you are going through that that suffering and when you have that knowledge you'll be able to break free from it by applying our uh, the application of the relevant knowledge to receive to such deliverance now if you do not know that your four parents were dabbling in witchcraft in the occult in secret society the illuminati masons skulls and bones and all that and the different um women fraternities eastern stars and you 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 you, you and be rosicrucians and all that if you do not have such knowledge you're gonna just live and continue to be living and think life is just like that the way it is not knowing that they have made pacts and signed covenant with devils who are not just interested in casual relationship in not just in the one who signed the pact in the past maybe a hundred years ago 50 years ago 30 years ago 
and you do not know. But when you have such knowledge that they have done such and they were a part of such secret societies, fraternities, lodges, halls, then you'll be able to go against it and you'll be able to destroy such covenants and evil altars by using the blood of Jesus and the fire of the Holy Ghost and come against such wicked demons and evil spirits and be delivered. The Bible says, through knowledge, you receive deliverance. You do not have to go into a, a church and a pastor, prophet, evangelist, karate chop you or blow in your face and you fall backwards or do all manner of theatrics for you to receive deliverance. Here you have it. It's the word of God. The word of God is pure according to Psalm. He said, through knowledge you just shall be delivered. So you don't need so much to burst quad buckle of oil and pour it upon your head for you to receive deliverance. What you need is the relevant knowledge uh, as to why you are in the situation, the predicament you are in, so that you can apply the relevant um, remedy to the situation and be set free from such tragedy or tragic circumstance and suffering that you find yourself in. Now, Leviticus chapter 26, 40 to 42 says, If they shall confess their iniquity and the iniquity of their fathers, with their trespass, they trespass against me, that also they are contrary unto me. So here we see in verse 40 of Leviticus 26, God is saying that we need to confess our iniquity and the iniquity of our fathers, that is our grandparents, great grandparents, and in those before them with their trespass, so the wickedness they have done, working in the witchcraft, working in sorcery, dealing in sciences, being a part of secret societies, and doing all manner of evil, serving other gods. And he said, and that also they have walked contrary unto me. Yes, you confess that, yes, God, they did this, they walked contrary to you. And as a result, we are suffering, and that's why we are experiencing what we are, that's why I am experiencing what I'm experiencing. As for fathers and for parents, they have been a part of the Illuminati and the Masonic lodges. And if you check it, you would see the names there and that I'm a part of the bloodline. It comes from them and they have been a ranking member. Now the Bible says, and that I also have walked contrary to them. So because of that, no, the curses which were affixed to that, the fine prints, to that covenant which they did not read or some of them know what they did that they sell out the females sell out the males that every first bond will come to nothing every first bond will suffer or every male and female this will happen to them some will be childless barren they will never marry they will be prostitutes and whores men use them and sleep with them the male they will never have kids and they will die they will uh, suffer they be gambler they will be drunkards and womanizers and you name it and they will live a life which is contrary to the law of god now he says and i also have walked contrary to them so god is telling you because you were contrary your four parents were contrary he was contrary to them so they decide to go in the way against god's law well god is going to go with his law so they are going one is going east one is going west so god is not going to put his blessing upon them god is going to withhold his blessings from them and you're going to see and understand what i'm saying shortly now it says if then their uncircumcised hearts be humbled and they then accept of the punishment of their iniquity then will I remember my covenant with Jacob and also my covenant with Isaac and also my covenant with Abraham. Will I remember and I will remember the land. You know the covenant with Isaac, Jacob and Abraham is that God said he will bless them and he will curse all those who curse them. And that is the blessing. Then from once they go serve other gods, dealing witchcraft and science and the spirit world dealing with the dark world, then they're going to receive curses 
So God is saying here that we need to confess the sin of our full parents and our sins and iniquity and ask God to forgive us and forgive those sins and then we should walk in newness of light and be obedient to God's commandments. Deuteronomy chapter 28, 1 through to 14 tells us how to remedy our suffering situation and how we can be free from all tragedies and tragic circumstances that we find ourselves in, dilemma that we might be experiencing. Now, according to verses 1 and 2, as you can see on the screen, it says, And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command you this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee and I above all nations of the earth. Moses here was instructing the children of Israel just before his departure and before he dies, he was recapping the history of the children of Israel going through the Red Sea, walking throughout Canaan land and what God has done for them and it was telling them how they can be successful how they can walk in their God-given destiny how they can be high achievers how God will is able to elevate them above all people of the earth and that's just by being obedient to God's commandment hearing the word of God and doing it as James said do not just be ears of the word was of the word and that is what God is calling you and God is calling me to do today he wants us to put the word into action so that others can see Christ in us and he said when we do that he will elevate us above all people of the earth and all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Now, as you read Deuteronomy chapter 28 and you read verse 3 through to 14, it says, Blessed shall thou be in the city, and blessed shall thou be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of thy ground, and the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. Blessed shall thou be when thou come in. Let shall thou be when thou go out. The Lord shall cause thy enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way, flee before thee seven way. The Lord shall command the blessings upon thee in thy storehouse. All that thou settest thy hands unto, he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. The Lord shall establish thee an holy person unto himself, as he has sworn unto thee. If thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways, and all people of the earth shall see that the Lord called by the name of the Lord, they shall be afraid of thee, and the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods, in the fruit of thy body, in the fruit of thy cattle, in the fruit of thy ground, in the land which the Lord sent to thy fathers to give thee. God shall open unto thee his good tre treasure, the heaven to give the rain unto thy land in the season. Bless all the work of thine hand, and thou shalt lend unto many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. And the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail, and thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath, if that thou hearken unto the commandment of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day to observe and to do them. And thou shalt not go aside from any of the words which I command thee this day to the right hand or to the left to go after other gods to serve them. So I'm here to tell you that you will be a man who cannot remedy your situation. Occult, secret societies, maze, illuminati, politics, you name it, old man cannot remedy your situation. Only by hearkening unto the commandment of the Lord thy God and not going to the right and or to the left. But remaining steadfast in your obedience to God that can remedy your suffering situation. And as I have just read the blessings, it comes when you obey God's words, you hearken, you take heed, you listen, 
you'll be and you do that is what will happening so here i've set forth to you how you can overcome your suffering and be set free from it in jesus name may god bless you and keep you let us pray father i want to thank you for the privilege to teach your word i pray you would bless all those in my hearing and all those who have studied with this channel in jesus name i pray amen now you can support the channel by liking the video sharing the video and leaving a comment and subscribe if you are not yet subscribed may god bless and keep you and have a good week in jesus name amen